In previous videos on this channel, we've discussed putting assets into your trust, that is, funding your trust. We've even talked in detail on how to fund your trust with real estate and any financial accounts you might have. Today, we're capping off that discussion with everything else that goes into being funded into your trust, your personal property, artwork, and collectibles. Hi, attorney Andrew Bethel. No funding meeting with my clients is complete without a discussion about their personal property, namely the items they have but don't necessarily have a title to like they would real estate or bank accounts. Your untitled property. This includes just about everything you own like tools in the garage, pictures on the wall, your furniture, appliances, books, clothing, jewelry, and the list goes on. Generally speaking, since you don't have a title to these types of assets like you would with real estate, the way to get them into your trust is by assigning your interest in the property to the trust. What does that mean? It simply means another form that is included with and made a part of your trust wherein you are essentially saying, my personal property is to be included as a part of my trust estate. That assignment gets signed when you sign your trust and can be updated as time goes on if you wish to keep it current with a specific list of assets. However, most of the time, a general assignment using general language, such as all my furniture, is sufficient to show you intended to hold your personal property in your trust. These assignments can be called different things, an assignment of personal property or a schedule of personal property, for example, but the content will be similar. Lastly, there are some personal items that you may wish to be more specific about when funding your trust with them, artwork and collectibles. However, the process is going to be the same as other untitled assets, assigning your interest to your trust. There are a couple reasons we might want to be more specific though. The first of which is to make it clear that a collectible or appreciating asset like artwork is included in the trust and distributed by the trust in order to preserve a stepped up tax basis on the sale of that asset by your heirs. As a quick refresher, a capital gains tax is a tax on the difference between what you purchased an asset for and what you sold it for, the gain in value being taxed. If you were to gift artwork, for example, and the recipient turns around and sells the artwork, then they will pay taxes on the gain between what you purchased the art for and what they sold it for. However, if you kept the artwork during your lifetime and the recipient instead received it as an inheritance before selling it, then their capital gains is calculated on the value of the property as of your date of death when they inherited it and what they sold it for. Their capital gains tax basis stepped up to the date of death value rather than staying as the date of your purchase value. Making sure appreciating assets like artwork is in your trust ensures the preservation of this step up in basis without losing potential gains to probate court fees. Additionally, another reason you might want to be more specific about artwork and collectibles is because this information is invaluable with respect to the registration of copyrights, challenging fakes, ensuring their value, and reporting lost or stolen collectibles. Fake artwork and collectibles is a big problem, especially when it comes to pop culture items, so we should make sure that we have an inventory of your base set Pokemon cards with the fossil and jungle expansions included. We don't want that mint condition Charizard to get lost or turn out to be a fake in the long run. Now, all joking aside, when it comes to specifically identifying artwork and collectibles in your documents, the more detailed, the better. This includes an inventory list of each piece the creation date, the medium, a history of where the piece came from or where it's been exhibited, and an approximate price list with a suggested retail price or appraised value. There's more that can be included here, but we'll list those in detail in our companion blog linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out some of our other excellent videos here, but don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and tell us what you'd like for us to cover down in the comments below.